explain a little bit about the blues as I understand it. Um, a scale is effectively seven notes and what they do with the blues is drop several notes. So you end up with a five note scale. Uh, it's the blues scale. Now what this machine allows you to do is throw in what they call the devil's note. Um, now this effectively is a half note and this is what gives you the cool sort of funky sound that everyone's looking for. It's a note that you play, you don't play a lot, but when you put it in there, people want to hear it again and again. So I'll just give you an example. <laughs> That's the devil's note, and the way you can do this is on the second note up, you roll your finger and just slide it back a little bit. You can see that, and just sliding back a little bit, and that's effectively opening the whole half a note so you get that sort of flattened sound. Um, it takes a bit of practice. It's more on your fingering, but what you want to do if you're going to play that note is make sure you've got a full uh, lung full of air to get it started. Uh, maybe start on a note, number three note down, and then... If you try playing it with a half full set of lungs, you're going to struggle, you're going to run out of air because you've got to get that note started. Once it's started, it's okay, you can then play with it, but it's to get it started. So as you're, as you're starting out, um, practice just rolling that second finger a little bit and you'll get that cool wild note or devil's note sound. And that really does make a lot of difference when you start jamming on this. <laughs> the one that makes you want to make the facial expressions because if you can throw that in a, 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 in a sequence it sounds cool it feels cool and it makes you feel super cool um, so yeah just just practice all the stuff comes with a bit of time but um as your fingers become more comfortable and, and everything starts to roll then you'll find that uh you can start to achieve a lot more I don't know, different characteristics out of the machine um, you can do it with all the notes, but you find that that one there is it's conveniently positioned. Your fingers naturally go to do that one. Um, yeah, so that's the one I'd practice. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about music and, and getting into it. So I'm going to play your track. It's just I've been listening to it lately and uh, this sort of emphasizes a little bit about what I've been talking about is that the beat is the street and you're following the street and occasionally you get to go up the side street and have a jam and come back and look. Now if you're playing in a band environment you can't just keep ripping because other people have other stuff to do. You've got guitarists who want to have a, a jam, you've got obviously the vocalists and so forth. But if you haven't listened to this, you might hear what I'm trying to say. Now, this is a guy, Taj Mahal, the blue, the Hula Blues Band, Karina, and it's live. Um, now, have a listen to this track. I'll put it on halfway through, and I'll try and explain what's going on. <laughs> We got some vocals happening, and there's a little bit of sax happening in the background. And the guy is now starting to get in there. He's looking for the street. He's he's cruising down the street with the sax, and you hear him pop in occasionally. So here he comes now. So he's finding the street. He's following that beat. Hovering away there, it's 
keeping up with the play, he knows he's going to be going into a solo. But he's got to make way for the vocalist, of course, he's got his thing happening. And he's just popping away, you can hear him. Here he comes again. Now, he's going up the side street. Come back down to the street. Now, if you have a close listen to that solo, he's he's been coming in, going out, coming in, and then he's got his his, his moment in the sun where he can come out and 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 jam and. and been waiting for that moment and he comes in and rips and he just takes a, a, a cool side street goes and has a play around up there and he brings it back down and then starts following the beat and so he'll come in and out through the rest of the song <coughs> but if you're listening to what he's playing he's only playing five notes um, that's all he's doing he's playing exactly the same sort of thing that we can do on this saxophone he's playing in a higher octave which is it's the same notes, but it's in a higher, higher sort of group of notes. So, really, he's just doing what you can do. Now, that was a catchy beat. And if you go back and, and you want to play to that, just listen to it a few times. If you're tapping your foot, listen, see if you can come in, see if you can play with him. Because that's really all we're doing here. We're, we're, we're just jamming away. Um, following that beat clipping up a side street, coming back to the beat, finding another opening to go up there. Um, longer songs, you've got more instruments, everyone wants to have a crack, a, a guitarist wants to have, go and have a jam, a, a ukulele player wants to have a jam, sax player wants to have a jam. Um, and that's how the music sort of breaks down into sections. Obviously this is a, you know, it's a vocal orientated band, so the vocal's the key, key situation, but um, all the musicians want to have a go. So that's how, how music forms up, is you break it down into sections, and his section was then. So I suggest you go and have a, start listening to music like this, start listening to the actual solos, and you'll f start to understand that they're, they're actually, it's only a small group of notes being played. The difference is they've found the beat, and they can make those notes clip through at the right speed and so forth. But that's all following that street, the ch ch and then guiding off up the side street, having your jam, and then coming back. Now, it repeats, repeats, repeats. It's almost all, all, all songs, all bluesy, jazzy sort of stuff. That's effectively what's going on. Hmm. Have a think about it and, yeah, listen to different, different acts that you, you, you like and just look at what these guys are doing. Um, it's a surprisingly small amount of notes, but they're making a very cool sound. And sometimes um, the basic stuff is the best stuff. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about rhythm and melody. Um, two different sort of parts of a, a song. Um, now effectively rhythm is the drum beat. It's the thing that makes you tap your foot. So that's what sort of grabs your attention. The other part of the song is the melody and that's effectively what makes you hum or, or whistle. Um, so two di different things going on here. As, as this, this, this unit really plays the call it the melodies. Um, it's not so much a rhythm machine. Rhythms are drums, it's just, just the constant beating of, and that's the, the thing that grabs you, makes you tap your foot. Melody, I think, makes you hum, a, uh, hum or whistle, and, and probably the, the best exponents of rhythm and melody would, would have to be the, the Beatles. When you combine 
an amazing rhythm with awesome melodies. Um, that's what makes the number one songs. Uh, so a lot of the Beatles songs, well, we, we pretty much know every song. And, and it's not because they've been necessarily around for a long time. It's because they're so bloody good. And you listen to them. You hear them. You remember them. So that's this amazing combination that McCartney and Lennon had of, of blending rhythm and uh, melody. You can throw Ringo Starr in there because he was uh, he was the drummer that, in a way, listening to the Beatles interviews, set them set them up, took them to another level. So rhythm's hugely important. Uh, but when you combine the two, yeah, you've got some magic happening. Another bit of an example of rhythm and melody, and, and I don't know whether this is one hundred percent correct, but if you listen to Eminem, now he starts out with a sort of rappy rhythm, which is pretty hard to hard to um hum to for argument's sake but then what he does when he gets to the choruses he throws in a real beautiful piece of melody and that's the bit we want to sing or that's what we want we, you know Rihanna's sounding awesome um, that's the bit that we want to hum we want to play we want to sing out loud so there's just a little bit of a difference between what's going on with rhythm and melody um, two vital bits uh, to make up any musical composition the good guys get it perfect and that's what turns them into number one songs. Uh, yeah, so effectively we're playing the melody bit. We're doing the whistling bit or the humming bit, if that uh, makes a bit of sense. <laughs> vital components to, to doing anything well, anything, I don't care what it is, a school exam, playing music, skiing down a hill, um, biking up a hill, uh, is to be able to be relaxed. So when you relax, all sorts of good things happen. Um, your body gets into a better shape, better position, all stuff starts to happen naturally. So relaxation is key uh, to, to playing this. It will always sound sweeter if you're relaxed. Everything operates smoother, your fingers move smoother, the, the air out of your lungs moves smoother. If you're relaxed, you're giving yourself more time to think out the next tone or... Um, so, yeah, critical is to somehow get into a, a situation where you can relax. Uh, you can be blind hard, but if your body's relaxed, you'll find it's a damn sight easy to, pl to, to play it hard. Um, so, without a doubt, if you're playing this, get in a relaxed situation, uh, and then by playing this in a relaxed situation, you'll relax even more. <laughs> so, uh, relaxation is, is one of the key things. Um, yeah, definitely key. Key aspect to, to, to anything, but uh, especially with this, and as a relaxed player, you're going to play better, you're going to relax more, you're going to play even better. So, there you go, that's my, uh, my take on being relaxed. Okay, I'm gonna come in with through state of this um this program uh, just little tidbits of knowledge. Well, I don't know knowledge. Um, just a slightly different way once again of looking at music, but try and explain something about scales. A scale is basically just an ascending group of notes. Um, if you imagine them in a step, so a step, and they're all even steps, so you're walking up these steps. Uh, now that's just your stock standard scale. What the blues do is they take a couple of notes out of those scales. So instead of having a very even staircase, you have staircase, stair, and then maybe a longer steer, so, and then a steer and a shorter steer. So effectively they're an awkward um, looking staircase. Uh, now, that's what gives us the interesting tones. So what a lot of musicians or a lot of instruments have is a, is a lot more staircases or steers, and so you can make a whole bunch of series of patterns. 
effectively the same pattern, different octaves. Now what this instrument has done, it's taken all the, the sort of unnecessary notes out. So it just gives you what you need, um, nothing more and nothing less. After that, it becomes your imagination how you walk up and down these stairs. You might take a short step up and a short step down, run up the top, come down two steps, but all the time you're making these awkward sort of step shapes. And uh, that's what's giving the, the characteristics or the nature of the sound. If it was very even up and down, it would actually sound, become a bit monotonous. Uh, obviously there's a place for that sort of stuff. But the sort of music I want to play, and, and if you're thinking of playing one of these, probably means you want to play it, is that style of music. So yeah, it's the blues. Um, you run up and down that staircase making different patterns just to a beat. So there's another one I'm looking at it. Think that one out. Okay, now this is where the fun starts. Imagine the scene, you're at the beach, hence the shirt. You got the sunnies on, you got the cool hat because you're a sax player. You pull your pocket sax out. You got this sound picture going through your head and you're about to rip and impress a whole bunch of people. <laughs> So what we're going to do here, this is a good exercise, I'm going to put some backing tracks on. They go for six and a half minutes, so it's going to start out with a funky, just a cool, slow beat. Um, and it's going to move into a little bit more sort of rhythmic guitar -y stuff and then end up on a, another cool, funky beat. So what I'll do is I'll start playing, I'll have a blast, and then I'll raise my hand. And when I call you in, I'll just give you a countdown. Now don't race to get into it, just find that beat. Find the street. You start jamming for, I don't know, a few minutes, 15 minutes, uh, 15 seconds. Um, I'll come back. So I'll give you like a 15 second break. And then you do your thing, come back to me. And so what we're gonna do is build up this cool sound picture. You playing <laughs> and me playing. And uh, yeah, just see how it goes. Right, it's a Bluetooth speaker. Back beats, here we go. Six.
funky beat. So you got a few more beats left. This is a cool thing, cool song. Take it, it's got a cool beat. I've been mucking around with it. It's coming. Okay, so there's hundreds of backing tracks on YouTube. Um, try a few, have a listen. If you can get the beat, it's definitely worth downloading. Um, if you choose to download them, you don't know how to convert, I'll just give you a quick demonstration on that. I pause that. On the other page I have an MP3 converter. You can find that on uh, Google, whatever. Um, okay, just click that. Edit. Copy. Open up the MP3 converter. Edit. Paste, convert to. So that then automatically converts that. I'll just cruise through there so your backing track's going down onto your. Then convert it just to a video, uh, just an audio track. And um, just follow the instructions if you. Hit download. That goes straight up to there. And in a minute it'll uh, be downloaded. And it'll be on your iTunes after that. Uh, you can do with it as you wish. But play around with it. Anyway, that's a that's that's one way to pick up a lot of backing tracks. Listen to whatever makes you beat. Tap your foot if you think you can play it. Download it and have a go.
Okay, that's now just popped up in um, iTunes, so there you go. As simple as that. Now I'd like to talk about the the 28 day thing I said at the start. Um, you've obviously got through this course, you've got your opinion on it, hopefully it's working for you. I'm really hoping it's working for you because um, yeah, it puts a smile on a lot of people's faces I think if they can do a bit of this. Um, I've said 28 days because although it only takes a couple of hours to go through this course and to learn the, the understand what's going on, to develop these muscles, develop your, your throat moves, um, controlling the read, keeping the tone going, following beats. Now that's a, a really a pretty big process. Um, 28 days is a pretty, mm, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a realistic target to get proficient with tones, interchanging between notes and starting to follow beats. But of course, this is a lifetime project. Music just keeps going and going and going. So um, I'd like to think by now, some of you after 28 days were, were getting it down and really starting to enjoy this instrument. Now, if you are, by the time you've been doing it for 56 days, 100 days, two years, three years, five years, um, I get the feeling you're gonna have a, a huge amount of fun. And of course, all your techniques will get better. You're gonna add to stuff that, God, I can't do. Um, you're going to play different beats, make different sounds, find different rhythms, groups. Um, it's just going to be an ongoing process. So I really hope uh, I've sort of achieved something in, in, in showing you a, 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 a path into music that maybe wasn't accessible to you before. Um, so good luck with it. And uh, I'll come back. I'll put lots of tips and tricks in it as we come up. And as, as the, the program goes, I'll keep adding bits and pieces because I'm regularly showing people how to play these things and, and um, I'm picking up techniques, training techniques as I go. I'm not a, a teacher by any means. So um, yeah, thanks for, 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 for doing this and um, enjoy it.